good morning and welcome to Winnipeg now we are getting a little bit of a later start here this morning I know that we've had our sunrise I'll show it to you later nothing special walkers showed up just the usual stuff so I'll try and do it quick <laughs> anyway uh, no you're probably all looking at the bandage in the front of my forehead here uh, <laughs> well I, I didn't adhere to my own rule which goes something like if you keep your eye on the door you're not going to bang your head with the corner of the door I'll show you what happened You were thinking the cupboard door in the kitchen, weren't you? <laughs> nope. I did that uh, yesterday when I was going to the store. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. <laughs> um, if, if I was to take this bandage off, I would look like... Uh, do you remember uh, the in the original Godfather movie? And, and Michael was... Uh, uh, going to avenge his father's honor or something like this and he he, uh, he 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 went into the restaurant and they went into the restaurant and they were <clears throat> Michael goes into the washroom and there's a gun hidden there and he takes the gun comes out with the gun and and he he shoots uh, I think the the guy's name was McClutsky or something anyway there's a famous scene there where McClutsky's sitting there for a split second and he's got a bullet hole right in his forehead. Well, that, that's what I'd look like if I took this bandage off, so I'm, I'm not about to do that. Uh, yeah, but probably the bandage is going to be on there for a few days. <laughs> uh, at least in our opening scenes. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I, I think that, that video... That, that movie, rather, The Godfather, uh, I'm pretty sure it was in 1972, because I remember where I was when I first saw it, and I believe it was the summer of 72. Do you know that is over, what is that, 51 years ago? Where has the time gone? My goodness. <laughs> okay, got a comment this morning from one of the viewers, and, and he said that he is holding off watching any builds of the of the Yamato because he's waiting for me to do it. And I'm thinking, my goodness, <laughs> I, I, I'm very honored, but you know, I sure hope there's not too many people doing that because uh, as much as, I, as I, I'm planning to do the Yamato, there's the chance it's not going to happen. I, I am finding, I may as well be honest with you, I am finding that as as the months roll by, I, I'm getting less and less energetic in the evenings. And, uh, well, here's an example. Uh, like right now, I think today might be a good day to start on the sprue pen, you know, mixing up the two-part chemicals and mixing the uh, uh, sprue things in it and, and so on. And, uh, but you know what? When five, six o'clock in the evening rolls around, I just don't feel like it anymore. I just don't seem to have the energy that I, that I used to uh, just over four years ago when I made this model table. <laughs> That's life. And I'm not complaining. I, I'm not in any pain. So <laughs> if you're not in any pain and you're happy, hey, enjoy it, right? Okay. Uh, I did come back to the model table last night, but we're not going to really have a, a rollback because uh, I didn't video anything and I was on the other side of the model table. And what I did was I cleaned up the stuff that's been accumulating there for the last four years. Uh, a lot of junk and stuff I just didn't need. Uh, but mainly I wanted that sheet of plywood that, or half sheet of plywood that I've been using as a, as a, uh, a big shelf that I've been loading my stuff on and I basically got it all cleaned off and a lot of, a lot of stuff thrown out but that that's what I did at the model table yesterday uh, so we didn't get anything done here but hopefully maybe today 
we can get something else done here. I, I still would like to try and, and paint with it with a brush one of those little tiny pieces just to see how it goes. I don't want to do them all with a brush because I know the, the airbrush will do a lot better job. Well, I've got another idea about the airbrush. I, I, I know that I use a, an awful lot more paint, as I mentioned, when I, with the airbrush than if, with a paintbrush. And uh, I was thinking one of the reasons is because I sort of have a feeling that I, I, I just don't want to get in really, really, really close to something with it and just and just pull the, uh, the trigger back just a tiny little bit until you see it starting to paint because I don't really know exactly where I'm aiming at. And I was thinking afterwards, if I was to have something behind the part, uh, you know, a little piece of paper, a little white piece of paper, right directly behind the part that I'm trying to paint, then I could see this sort of like a shadow, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try that today, maybe, and see how it goes. At least that's the plan right now. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, why don't we just uh, see how it goes? Okay, I finally have everything mounted on either rotating blocks or some sort of holding device. If you remember these ones here, we were going to paint with a brush. Um, these ones here, I will use the airbrush, but I want to be able to hold them in my hand. So, uh, and these, uh, the uh, K21s and K22s or whatever it was, we're going to not paint them because they're they're just too too delicate, and um, they're already pretty much the same color as you know the the uh, the 19. Uh, so so we are ready to go except for these these little spotlights here which are even smaller than I got to be careful how I pick it up they're even smaller than what's that weight on my finger oh that's isopropyl alcohol okay I thought for a minute there I was getting leprosy or something um actually I didn't think that um uh, Okay, so I what I've done is I've done, I've made a hole with a pin uh, through here, and I think that what we can do is mount these very carefully. These have a very, very small positioning pin hole. So I think what we'll do is see if we can't just take, take off this top layer here, and uh, I'll, I'll put the macro lens on, and we'll try and mount these on these two blocks. Now try and get this position just right so I can drop it down and let's be careful where I squeeze on this thing because well, if I it's not going as easy as I thought it was going to. Oh there I got it. Okay now don't drop it. I can always wiggle it straight later. Okay, let's uh, wiggle it straight. Very gently now, don't press too hard or you're going to break it off with a bracket. I wonder if I could almost do this one better with my fingers here. Oh, this one's going good. Okay, here we go. Try and drop it in that hole. So that it doesn't blow away because it is so small that well, it, it wouldn't pass through the filter in the spray booth, but... Alright, you can sort of see what I've got going on there. Yeah. A little bit of flashing or something on the very top there. I think that's in place good enough. I don't think that's going to blow off of there. Okay, I have just mixed up our 66 here in the paint shaker. And uh, this is my most delicate and smallest brush. And I think if I'm very careful, I'm not going to bend these little, what represent handles for s steering this thing around. Um, we'll put the macro lens on naturally. And we'll just see how it's going to go. Uh, it, it probably is going to take two coats, 
Uh, this this is thinned out a bit. At least I think it is. Sounds like it is. Um, okay, let's let's uh, recompose here. Uh, these ones here, I'll probably use a larger brush. Now I was just thinking here. I should maybe be changing into my old bus depot work shirt. I don't want to get Jeff's nice Bismarck shirt uh, with 66 on it. You know Murphy's Law. Okay, I think I'm going to go do that. Okay, will not be having the rotator turned on for when I'm trying to do it with the brush here because that would be too awkward. Unless possibly for the pedestal. There's obviously no paint on my brush yet. Um, I no, I, I think that that would be just too distracting, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to switch it off here. All right. Yeah, I can I can always turn it with my finger, need be. And there will be a need. Okay, now. <clears throat> this is where I want to be extra careful. I'm not not too worried about, you know, you might say kind of flooding it on because if I'm going to just be putting on one coat here, won't be able to see underneath there anyway. All right, is it blobbing on the end here? No, I don't think so. No, how about right in here? I don't think I got it in there. Sorry, I'm probably going to be turning it out of your best field of view. Okay, have we got everything there? Let's just check the check the seat here. I'm not too worried about the bottom of the seat because clearly we're not going to see that even if we had a little tiny mirror that we could drop on the deck. Yeah, you know, this is actually working pretty good. It, it won't be as, as uh, it won't leave the detail as defined as the airbrush would. But I think once it dries it's going to be what you might call acceptable. Okay, does it look like I missed anywhere? I don't think so. I'm not seeing any photo etch glinting or anything on the, off this photo etch piece here. It's not very straight though, is it? It's kind of bent a little bit down on the left side. Oh no, it's bent on the right side. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's just let that dry and we'll see how it looks. I think it's going to be okay. You can almost uh, see it shrinking already. As I'm sitting here in front of the computer screen right now looking at this, I can see it infinitely better than I could when I was actually doing it. And yes, we can see that there is a little bit of photo etch glinting. I may or may not do something about that later. We'll see. Okay, now for this piece here, I'm using this as sort of a, you might call it a marker, or sort of a positioning, yeah, a marker. And, uh, and that way I know that if I hold this piece directly over top, it's going to be more or less in focus. I think that's pretty good. OK, 
Okay, you want me to do the other one? I think I heard somebody say yes. Okay, don't want to, you know, take bathe our street light here and yeah, I think I got everything. I should have rigged up a bit of a jig so that I could rotate this without shaking it. Okay, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna be fine once it dries. We'll take a look at them once they're dry. Okay, a moment ago I was looking at this thing here and uh I was wondering if possibly a uh, trumpeter in their manual has us positioning the handles wrong because envision somebody sitting on the seat. Like, let's uh, bring our uh, friend Barnacle Bill into play here. Okay, he's sitting on the seat. And uh, if he's sitting on the seat and his eye is up against the eyepiece there that I'm touching with his foot, uh, these handles are just in the wrong position. They should be more drooped down, almost, I, I would think almost straight down. That, that would be a lot more comfortable, or, or almost straight down. Um, now, I'm going to see if I can't find these things on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's got to be a picture somewhere. Okay, I have just gone through Stefan's book. Not well, that's a lie. I didn't go through it. I just started looking into it a little bit here. And I came to a drawing that is something similar to what we're talking about here. And yes, it does show that the handles go back as far as the seat back. Uh, now that just looks darn uncomfortable to me. Now you got to remember, this is a drawing. And it could be wrong too. It would be really nice if I could find a photograph, not a drawing. Earlier this morning, after I had swung our sunrise camera around so it could become our bird feeder camera, I noticed that the black oil sunflower seeds did not seem to be going down. In other words, the tray seemed to be a little bit empty. Uh, in fact, I couldn't really see any seeds in, in the tray, at least not from my perspective, way back here sitting in front of my computer. <laughs> So I thought I'd better get out there and check this out because there's probably a log jam going on. Well, it turns out they, there wasn't really much of a log jam. I expected it to be sort of all frozen up inside, but it, it wasn't. And it, it took very little effort to get them to start dropping down again. I imagine that the little birds, if they really wanted it, they could sort of beak them out of there. <laughs> anyway, a few minutes later after I came in the house, this is what I saw. And this made it all worthwhile. Okay, at the uh, beginning of today's episode, I was talking about wanting to have a light background behind the little part as it rotates. And, and the idea would be that, that I, would, I would spray the part and it would leave a, you might call it a shadow on the, on the, on the white paper, then move it a little bit, like half an inch, and sp spray another part and then move it. But I'd have to rig up something that would you know, stand in the in the back of the uh, spray booth, uh, other, because what will happen is the the spray will tend to it has to be pretty heavy duty because the spray will tend to push this back. Now I'm I'm just sort of thinking out loud here, uh, but that's that's sort of what I'm thinking of. Um, I think it would work. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to call it quits for this afternoon. Uh, it's getting on and uh, I do want to work on the 
I guess we'll call it the second model table in the back room. That, that piece of plywood and those folding table legs that you saw there earlier. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to call her quits and work on that. And uh, I guess uh, our sprue pen is just going to have to wait. Yeah, um, you know, if the back room isn't finished, I can't turn this anyway. But of course I could pour it. I, I could do that, make the blank. But anyway, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.